With the cold weather in full force, business in downtown Fredericton has slowed down. With minimum wage going up, this adds a whole new challenge. Nathan Swain has more on this story. Half-off signs like these are becoming more common downtown. The above average snowfall and chillier temperatures have reduced foot traffic in some downtown businesses, ultimately affecting their bottom line. Emily Brown of Made You Blush, a makeup supply store, saw the correlation between the winter weather and the foot traffic. It's a crazy blizzard, but I'm pretty much sitting here just waiting for the day to end. I barely get anyone in, but um, you know, people that have to work in the offices, they still come because it's they're already downtown. And Jen McIver of Room to Remember indicated that the store wasn't that affected by the winter weather, but she did see a decrease in foot traffic. We definitely see less foot traffic during the winter months. It's definitely a lot busier in the summer, but we find where it's a baby store, I mean, people need the baby products regardless, so they'll come out in the storms. The weather isn't the only problem facing local small businesses. This January, the New Brunswick government announced four wage increases in the province. This will take minimum wage from $8.25 an hour to $10 an hour. This announcement combined with the winter weather could act as a one-two punch to some stores' pocketbooks. New Brunswick has the second lowest minimum wage in Canada, just above British Columbia by 25 cents. With these annual wage hikes over the next 20 months until September 1, 2011, it will be the highest in Canada along with Nunavut. For some, this is merely pocket change, but for businesses in the downtown area, with winter gripping at their seasonal sales, this could mean the difference between a profit or a loss. I'm Nathan Swain for Stu Journalism. It's illegal for anyone under the age of 19 to smoke, but breathing in secondhand smoke has never been an issue, up until now. Smoking with children in the car has recently been made illegal. Brittany Duthright has more. The very first week of the basement tapes, I promised to take you to a family who has to deal with the new smoking ban, which just came into effect this year. Now we're here, at the house of Ashley and Tracy Hatfield. We're going to talk to them to see how they're dealing with this new law. Ashley and Tracy have each been smoking for 10 years. They've both tried to quit, but the habit is hard to break. Myself, I've tried everything, the gum, patch, uh, the pill, Champex, um, tried chewing tobacco, any other means of nicotine. And what about you, Ashley? Uh, I tried the gum and quit for about 12 days, but you're around it so much that you never get rid of that craving, so. Their daughter, Bria, is four years old. She's young, but old enough to develop her own opinion on smoking. It's bad for you, and you can get phlegm. Okay, why is it bad for you? What about smoking is bad? Because when you smoke it, it's not very good. Bria's parents are aware of the dangers of secondhand smoke, but they are still having a hard time accepting this recent smoking ban. Are they going to enforce it like everything else? I mean, you walk down the street hand in hand with your kid and have a cigarette, are they going to give you a fine for that? There's more air in a car going through a car when you're going faster than, you know, puffing around your kid outside. They are not the only parents questioning this new law. Sarah Carr has been smoking since she was 13 years old. Since the ban came into effect, she still finds herself smoking in the car with her five-year-old daughter. I still like smoke in my car with my daughter. I know it's not a good thing, but you know, I smoke in my house as well too, right? So it's just like smoke where cops drive by and they don't really, they're not really looking at you. You know, they're not paying attention. And it's hard to see, really. It's easier to see if someone's not wearing a seatbelt or unless they exactly catch you putting a, a smoke. But she sits behind me in the car, so how would they really know if there was a kid back there? Even at a young age, her daughter Latoya disapproves of her actions. You have a mummy who smokes, right? What do you think about that? Mm, not good. Not good? Why isn't it good? Because sometimes it makes me cough. So why are these parents having such a hard time adjusting? You don't think about it. It's so natural and you just don't think of the consequences, I guess, in the end. A lot of it, too, like my parents smoked around me as a kid and I'm okay. So when smoking in, in the car with a child, do you think convenience <coughs> is a factor? Like I know for me, like, it would just take more time to get out of the car and yeah. do you think that has a lot to do with why people do it? Definitely. Yeah. For parents who smoke and question whether this law will be strongly enforced, Rest assured, it will be. 
Fredericton police say they will stop anyone they see smoking in a vehicle with a child under 16. Do you think people should be smoking in the car with kids? No. No? How come? Because the, the kids can get sick. Yeah. So are you happy that, that the police made it bad for people to smoke in their car with their kids? Yeah. Yeah? So you're glad mommy's not allowed to smoke in the car with you anymore? Yeah. I'm glad. You're glad? Do you want mommy to quit smoking? Yeah. For Stu Journalism, I'm Brittany Duthright. This winter, we heard the sad story about the puppies being abandoned in Odell Park. As Allison Chugut explains, the problem is the outdated pet laws here in New Brunswick. His name is Buddha. He's Kyle Gartshore's best buddy. They met two years ago at the Fredericton SPCA, and it was love at first sight. As soon as I sat down, it jumped up into my lap and turned upside down and demanded belly rubs. It started purring like crazy. It just came right over to me. So imagine how awful it was for an animal lover like Kyle to make this discovery last summer. Kyle was driving down a country road just outside Fredericton when he saw something strange on the side of the road. He pulled over to investigate. I'd found the puppies right here. Uh, there was two Cocker Spaniels and one of them had a sign around its collar that said SPCA please. I was in a hurry and I was already late for a function I was, and I could not take the dogs with me. So I had picked up the box and the puppies, ran to the road and waved down a couple. Uh, they called the SPCA, luckily they were open and they brought them in for me. So I was pretty disgusted by the whole situation. Someone was able to make a sign and not bring them in. This is a situation that isn't new to the area. A couple months ago, a litter of shepherd mixed puppies were found in Odell Park, only about seven minutes away from where Kyle had found the Cocker Spaniels. They were found in minus 15 degree weather by two high school students. Luckily, the teens acted quickly and brought them to a veterinarian. From there, the puppies were transferred to the Fredericton SPCA. These puppies were fortunate to have been found and later adopted into loving families. But cases like this don't always have a happy ending. Workers at the SPCA declined to be on camera, but all agreed that cases of animal abuse happen because the laws aren't tough enough. New Brunswick's pet laws that date back to the late 19th century have loopholes which allow pet abuse cases to be dismissed. Domesticated animals are firstly considered the owner's property and not a part of the family. Section 5 of the province's Pet Regulation Act says that disposing of an animal is legal if the owner destroys or assists in the destruction of an animal in a humane manner. These laws make it difficult for cases of abuse and neglect to come to court. It's especially difficult for animal lovers like Kyle who witness a disturbing situation firsthand. With these cases, answers are sought after, but justice is rarely served. In the case of the Odell Park puppies, there are still no leads to who may have left them in the park. The owner of Love Puppy Boutique, a local dog spa and shop, says that those who want change in the legislation must speak up before more cases of abuse occur. So something happens in the paper, um, tons of people come together, they, and which is great. It's great to see the numbers come out and support animals, but then things kind of die down and those people disappear. Um, so we need to be more proactive instead of reactive. So constantly be talking to our government and our MLAs and sending in letters and, and uh, you know, bugging people enough that we're going to get the changes that we need. Sharon is also the board president of the Kindness Club a registered charity dedicated to humane and environmental education. The club encourages people to act in defense of all living creatures with its ongoing programs. They include financial assistance for spaying and neutering, grade school presentations, and an annual essay contest for children. Kyle and Buddha think that education is a good first step for those who want change. New Brunswick's pet laws are ancient, and animal lovers believe they place our region in the back of the pack when compared to the rest of Canada. If this cat could speak, just imagine what he would have to say about that. 
Allison Too Good, Stew Journalism.